Welcome, everybody, to this very special edition of the Heartland Running Podcast. This is our birthday episode. That's right. We are one year old now. Um, this is a very, very special edition because we have been working hard to arrange these guests to all be on at the same time. We have um, Lazarus Lake, uh, also known as Gary Cantrell, Steve Durbin, and a special appearance by show favorite Naresh Kumar. Um, this didn't turn out like your typical interview. The audio quality is, well, it's not the best, but we had a lot of people on with um, varying degrees of connections. So the best way to listen to this is just to be a fly on the wall because it goes everywhere. It's wrong. It's right. It's funny. There's great stories. So uh, sit back and enjoy. Thank you for coming on, gentlemen. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. I don't have anything I can get away with, <laughs> which isn't much because I'm old and slow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are so glad to have you on. It is definitely an honor. I think the first question everyone's going to want to know, how did you two meet? Um, on a 100-mile walk across West Tennessee, I wanted to walk from Memphis to Real Foot Lake because it was 100 miles. And uh, I needed someone to park a car at one end while I parked at the other so that we could drive in between and not have to run 100 miles out to run 100 miles back. Steve answered the call. Actually, it was me and and Dirt Thompson were going to do it. And Dirt bailed at the last minute. Yeah. And he said, hey, Steve, if you're going to do this, make sure you take a lot of patience with you. <laughs> <laughs> because Gary doesn't get in a hurry for him. And um, so, yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. We were ready to find that motel in Dyersburg. I was in a hurry then. <laughs> That's right. Better than that motel we found the first night before we started. I don't even know if you if we could even talk about that on the podcast. <laughs> you can talk about whatever you want. Some interesting lodging. I have a I have a knack, a gift for locating any house of ill repute disguised as a motel along my route. <laughs> When you're on foot, you don't have the flexibility to say, oh, well, we'll just go to someplace else, maybe 10 miles up the road. You just say, ah, here's a, here's a, a clue for everybody on the road. When you go in and to get a motel room, if they ask if you're going to stay all night and act surprised, don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been to one of those motels. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Crystal, do you want to lead the conversation? Because I'm going to try to add another special guest to this call. And oh, it might yeah. take just a minute. The, uh, Gary and Steve, you, you may know this person if I can get him connected. So while Steve's working on, Steve's working on that, um, why don't we just do a little bit of, of your running history and how you got into specifically ultras? Okay. Uh, mine's a lot shorter than Gary's. I was like 100 years old for, I mean, Gary's 100 years old before I started. Uh, I started um, when I was 44. My At that stage, my mother died. And so I thought, I don't want to die when I'm 44. So I'm going to start doing some things and um, ran into some friends who were running. One guy owned a physical therapy store in Paducah. And my brother, John, was an excellent runner as well, they on a regular basis. So they finally convinced me to come join them and uh, ran my first race in the year 2000 uh, at age 45 and didn't even know people ran further than a marathon. I thought, you know, the Boston Marathon was the epitome of, of all running until I started looking on the Internet and saw that people ran 50 miles and, and even 100 miles. So. My first ultra was actually the MS-50, uh, ran that in 2003. Then we said, hey, let's put on our own ultra run. That's when we started Land Between the Lakes trail runs in 2004. Did my first 100 in 2004. That was at Umstead. And uh, I was into triathlon at the time as well. So did a bunch of Ironman and stuff like that. Ran into Gary. Actually, he does may not remember, but I first met him at Strolling Gym. Uh, I got into that race because I'd heard, I'd read about the Barkley marathons and I thought that's got to be the coolest thing I've ever read about. This is before 
everybody knew about it. So I went to Strella and Jim with the express purpose to meet Gary Cantrell, uh, the race director for the Barkley. And as it turned out, I squeaked in. I thought it was a 40 mile run. Really, it was 41.2. So when I got to 5K to go, I thought I had two miles to go and I was all mad because I thought he was kidding or something. <laughs> There's no way, no way it's supposed to be a 40 mile run. The t-shirt says Sterling Jim 40 mile run. It can't be another 5K to go. So I had it timed out where I was going to make it under seven because I wanted that cool sub seven shirt, the red one. No. And so when I saw that, I had to go in a rush. <laughs> are you hey, okay? can you hear us Naresh? i can hear you guys loud and clear oh just a picture of you you're not moving you're not moving your lips you're bent oh, really no now. it's super dark so it's gonna be just voice it's almost like <laughs> one o'clock in my world so oh because you're over in india right now correct Facebook oh yeah at one o'clock in my world yeah <laughs> I can see you all. Hey, Sandra, how are you? <laughs> now, sorry. Now, now, we asked Naresh to come on. We're sorry to, to interrupt right in the middle of your, your story, Steve, but we know how long he's going to have service. Um, we're yep. bringing Naresh on as our bullshit detector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, really I'm good at that. Go With I'll Steve yep. and Gary, it's easy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I better check out now since Naresh is on. <laughs> yeah, normally I get a, a ping in the middle of the night, and Terry's like, my wife's there, like, what's Naresh want now? <laughs> <laughs> now? All right, I'm ready. Now, now Steve. Has these guys been bullshitting you, Steve? We, we just started. Steve was in the middle of a story, so uh, we'll, we'll let him finish. Then I, I've got a real question for him. <laughs> okay, so Sounds anyway, good. I had to sprint the last 5k to finish under sub seven i was at 65949 and i went to get my shirt and i got my shirt and went back over and talked to gary always said at the finish line recording time the apple index card so you could go get your shirt and um i went back and i said hey aren't you gary Cantrell? and he goes yeah I'm, i might be why and i go don't you direct the barkley marathons and he said he uh could be why. And it's because I think I'd like to do it. Now, why would you, why would you want to do something like that? I said, cause I've been reading about it. It's the coolest thing I've ever read about. And he goes, well, you may be just crazy enough to, to, to be able to put you in there then. And it wasn't long after that same summer that, uh, we went, did that did the first year, did a hundred mile. That, and that was so cool. That we was saw the world's story. smallest airport. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> We saw a lot of stuff. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Steve, Naresh takes credit for introducing you to your wife. Is there, is there any truth to that? Uh, for my to my wife? Yeah. Introduced me. Yeah, I, I met her at um, Bloody Eleven W. <laughs> All right, just just yeah, she was going to Gary Gary and I because uh, she she lived in Knoxville. And, uh, Gary put something on the list because I was on, uh, narcotics. My back was hurt so bad. And, and Gary has all the health issues worse than me, even. And so she said, sure. And when she first said she was going to crew us, I was like, oh, man. It was because we were used to just doing it just the two of us. I thought, we only know Steve can help. But, uh, I think we would have stopped that first night and quit if it wouldn't have been for nah. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of bloody 11W, we, we caught in Rash in Rogersville. Yeah. We came over a hill and there he was looking very forlorn. Yeah. It's one what? proud moment for Gary that night, that morning when he caught me, I was like, damn it. He caught me. <laughs> <laughs> the but, bottom uh, of Gresh's foot looked like a, a raw pizza. That was the uh, worst blister I'd ever seen. <laughs> that was horrible. I mean, if not for Terry's help, I would not have finished. But also that race, I lost Steve Durbin to the dark side after that race. <laughs> <laughs> the next time, uh, six months or one year later, he sends him that wedding invitation. I'm like, damn it. I lost one more friend to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy he went to the real good dark side because she is dark as well. So. 
<laughs> G- Gary, do you have a, a favorite Naresh story? Some some dirt we can hold over his head? No, I'll cook you curry. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I don't know if it's dirt you can hold over his head. I uh, I loved it when Naresh ran his first ball state. Well, I, his only ball state so far. And he yeah. unfriended his own mother so she wouldn't know what he was going to do on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, went out there. he was the only person who has ever done A lot of people started it, especially during the height of the popularity and those five fingers, the, the sock five. shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they never they never finished except for that. Because it is. It is no way to treat your feet. He was telling me about he had he had stopped and bought two bags of ice and was sitting on the floor in an abandoned uh, convenience store <laughs> with the ice on his feet, weeping. <laughs> and his phone rang, and it was his mother who didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so those those who are listening to this that uh, don't know what Ball State is, can you tell me what that race is like? It's a it's five hundred kilometer vacation without a car. Okay, <laughs> yeah, oh, that that's no big deal. Everyone parks their car on top of a mountain in North Georgia, and we take them on tour buses all the way to, to Missouri and put them out, and they ride a ferry, run about a hundred feet, and then ride a ferry across the Mississippi River. And when the when the ferry gets to the other side and opens up, your car is three hundred and fourteen miles away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we got the pleasure uh, of hearing Naresha's Monday Man story. <laughs> oh, now you're talking. That's one of my prized possessions. Man, Gary signed my map at the finish line, saying, "Naresh, my Monday Man, you're my hero." Definitely goes on the Hall of Fame in my wall one day. He yeah. told you that that was all about. Yes, he looked to me for inspiration and support, words that he could turn to in his desperate low moments in the race. And I told him he wouldn't have any desperate low moments in the race. He would be back at work by Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> See, crazy but bastard. I- <laughs> <laughs> hey, N- Naresh, but turn around is fair play. Do you have a Gary story? Oh, Gary story. <laughs> I will take credit for putting him through pain. Last visit when I was there, we were at a Thai restaurant, and Gary and I, we both eat extremely hot food. So on the Thai menu, they had 10, which was the hottest, and the one was the mildest. So I was sitting there and I ordered, I wanted 15. I'm like, make me cry. This is like outside your menu. So I wanted 15 and Gary ordered 10, which was the spiciest available on the menu. And when the dish came, I was gobbling my dish and I wasn't even sweating. And I'm looking at this guy. He's sweating in buckets and buckets. (laughs) And the first thing that Gary says, looking at me is, Naresh, I think I got your 15 by mistake. (laughs) <laughs> so they, so the they waitress, didn't get him switched around yeah the waitress didn't know she switched it and the poor guy was going through pain so I stuck with 10 and let him finish his 15 <laughs> Gary has to tell me what happened the next day morning but that moment he was sweating so much I was like yes the guy who puts the whole world to torture is suffering right now in front of me <laughs> my moment of glory though it's by accident <laughs> Don't don't warn Steve because he's getting habanero blue cheeseburgers tonight. <laughs> ah, oh, Gary makes it super mild, Steve. You'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> I've had them before. They're pretty darn yeah. good. Unless soups them up a little more. <laughs> I mean, especially the Wall State talking about it, right? I think it became a famous quote when I think day three or day four, Gary, when you met me on the road, when he asked me how are you feeling. It was raw, emotional words. I said, I so want to get hit by a truck right now, only to be injured so that I can go home, so that I can call it quits. I don't want to die. I just want to get hurt, hit so much that I can just go home with my pride intact. Uh, Wall Street is a place there where you will wish you would get hit by a truck. 
and and Crystal's trying to talk me into doing this race some year. Gee, thanks, Crystal. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good friend. <laughs> oh, I heard Crystal's doing it next year. It it will make your vacation much longer. You know how you go on vacation and boom, it's over. It's like your vacation never even happened. At yeah. the Vols yeah. game, it's like your vacation is never going to end. <laughs> as much as you want it to, it keeps going. <laughs> Anything else. I, I think we'll have to get t-shirts using the rush of saying, Ball State, you want to get hit by a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've all thought that, but no one has jumped in front of a truck yet. <laughs> it's hard yet. to get the final yeah. details down and just get injured. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Wall State, man. It definitely changed my life for sure. One hello race. Gary, you won't believe who messaged me the other day. The cop who was almost about to arrest me, he sent a message after ages asking how I'm doing. <laughs> now, for those who would like to hear that story, Naresh had a couple episodes on his own, and it's a very interesting story, so I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. <laughs> Lewisburg is like why is the Bermuda Triangle of the Ball State. We've had uh, Naresh's adventure with the law and the meth heads <laughs> and he fell in with the meth heads until the law came and separated him. <laughs> 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 the, the poor two guys, Dopra Wallstein and, and Sariki who accidentally turned onto the bypass and spent a whole day circling Lewisburg <laughs> on the bypass, calling me and Carl on their cell phone and saying, we keep passing the same things. <laughs> 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 yeah, stop turning right. <laughs> that's that's mm. too good. Uh, talking about <laughs> Methead, <laughs> Every one of your race. Remember the naked meth head at Barclay, Gary? The naked meth head. Oh, Steve, I think you missed that story. That was my first time volunteering at Barclay I Marathons. Know. I thought that was going to be the story of the uh, last toad on you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, do you have a story you need to tell? <laughs> it's a pretty funny story. Tell it, Naresh. Oh, so that was my first year volunteering at Barclay. I wanted to see what it is all about. I was just about to enter Frozen Head State Park. The gate is closed. I get out of my car to see what's going on. And I just got back into the car. And out of nowhere, I see this naked guy running right in the middle of nowhere, running straight towards my car. And he's like a long, maybe like a long jump athlete or whatever. He's <laughs> one leg straight on the bonnet and just flies through the car and his leg on the boot and just runs away. And I regretted so much for leaving the uh, um, the moon door open because I saw his balls flying <laughs> on top of my head right there. <laughs> Seriously, I regret for keeping that open because there are some things in life that you can never undo, never forget. And that's a view I will never, ever forget. <laughs> <laughs> and he leapt through a full 16-foot sedan from one end to the other and just ran away into the woods in that freezing cold weather. <laughs> I just got down like, did I, was I hallucinating? I mean, I didn't even run. Why was I hallucinating? There's no way this happened until I got down, looked at the car, and I drove straight. And uh, Keith Dunn, the lawyer, and Gary was sitting by the fire because I think that year you started the race at 1 o'clock. And I told him what happened and they were laughing and they had to show Keith the footprints on the car and we had to call the cops the next day and they found the guy after he vandalized the, um, um, the officer's, um, uh, building and stuff like that. He was found in the back of a car, like the car was giving birth to a baby. He was in the back seat stuck and somebody had to pull him out. He was a method. It, just vandalizing in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, that's Barclay. I got a warning that year that never to go back. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, I went back to Barclay the following year. 
and came back with tail between my legs. So yeah, that's my naked method story. <laughs> you know, Naresh, I've heard from a guy from Nepal who wants to learn the Barkley and says that he can do more than the Indian guy did. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> wow. And it's smack right across the face, brother Naresh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, coming from Laz, I don't know if it's really true or if it's way of me coming to, <laughs> or if it's way of his revenge to make him eat that 15 Thai food. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I want to say challenge accepted, but I'm going to watch my words here very carefully. <laughs> yeah, you got to stay in shape, man. We got Mongolia in a couple of years. Exactly. <laughs> Barclay can wait. Mongolia first. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal. All right. So we, we have a Naresh story. We have a Gary story. We need a good Steve story. Who's got one? And they're all like, <laughs> <laughs> I've never done anything. Well, I could tell you about the motel he took me to before we started the, uh, the run across from Memphis to uh, Real Foot Lake, but I don't think there's any way to describe it, even on unedited. Media. Do, do I need to add some background <laughs> porn music going here? <laughs> we turned on the TV and I was offended. <laughs> Steve. Wow. It was <laughs> I wanted to watch a ball game, but like football. <laughs> you got a different type. <laughs> yeah, there were like 11 cats. 11 channels and about eight of them were porn channels. <laughs> <laughs> you knew this hotel well? Bad old, bad old porn channels. The, the, uh, the, the shower in that place, you had to hold the towel on the wall with your arm so it didn't fall in while you're trying to take a shower. It, it was it was not a good place. And somebody on the ultra list Recommend. recommended it. So it wouldn't like, hey, <laughs> This looks good. Let's go there. Yeah, he was. Oh, I wish I could remember his name. He yeah, was, he was did, not yeah. from Memphis. He married a girl from Memphis. And and he they never did like there. you either. Did he? <laughs> 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 he said, I said, yeah, I sent him to Cat and Blackies or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. She said, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> I think the moral of the story is that you do not take hotel reserv or uh, recommendations from ultra runners because these these are people that uh, don't shower for days <laughs> and are a little bit on the crazy side. So uh, yeah, I can I can understand how you could end up at a uh, place that has mostly porn channels. Steve, are you so offended it took you three days to leave? Or <laughs> no, we left early the next day. I think we were out of there about three a.m. <laughs> We only had to pay by the hour, so it was okay. <laughs> it was, I, really didn't, I really didn't know what I was getting into either because, you know, I knew Gary had been a runner his whole life, and I was a pretty decent runner at the time, and I was wondering if I could stay with him. So we started running. Well, we got about four miles, and then we started walking, and that was it. We didn't walk. We didn't run again. I don't think we ran again for like 20 counties. <laughs> 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 we ran a lot in Dyersburg. Yeah, we the, did. That we was... thought we were at our motel. We had about five or six miles to go, so we stopped and ate. And it's like, yeah, we'll eat and we'll go right down there to that corner you can see, and right around that corner is our motel. Right around that corner was not our motel. There was a hill, so we went up the hill. <laughs> oh, this hill was the motel. But on that hill was just another hill, and we did that. Six miles can seem like a long, long way. If you think your stop is around the next corner or over the next hill. Yeah, the, that on on that particular race was the time we stopped at that um, convenience store at the top of the ramp, and then we were there for about an, an hour. And we'd go in, and people, I, I, I dressed like a normal runner at the time, and Gary wore his long sleeve white shirt and his old hat and that kind of stuff. So in East Tennessee, I looked normal, West, and he West, West Tennessee. Tennessee, I looked normal. He looked out of place. Um, it's just the opposite of me. But uh, so we come out of that convenience store after being in there for about 45 minutes, maybe, uh, and then uh, get halfway down the ramp, not a hundred yards from 
the store, and Gary said, oh, man, I should have gone to the bathroom. And I said, well, let's go back. He goes, no, number one, you never go never back. Never go back. <laughs> Not even two steps. Forget it. <laughs> and we'll, there's a cornfield yeah, right And there's there. a cornfield down, down just a little ways. So he goes in the cornfield, and I think, man, it's going to be a quick in and out because he's got to go so badly. Well, after about 10 minutes, I'm thinking, Dang, I wonder, are you all right? Yeah, are you okay? And I'm, I'm kind of laying on the side of the shoulder of a four lane hallway. By okay, do you mean am I going to die? Not going to die. <laughs> well, at about 20 minutes, I kind of went over there and I didn't know him that, that well then. And I kind of looked in there. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to have to tell everybody on the ultra list that Laz is dead. He was, last time we saw him, went. <laughs> Going to put a bag of crap in the cornfield, and he never came out. And I was wondering how I was going to call Sandra and tell her. And I, and I had that uh, chief of police phone number. I thought I would like to call him, uh, but he did come out. If you went by there today, there would be a patch of corn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, all we organic corn. <laughs> oh, so I, I was wondering. I we know both of you have an illustrious ultra running history. Um, what made you both of you make the transition from just I hate to say regular runner, regular runner into an ultra runner? Because I mean, you guys are like the pioneers. I realized one day that I was never going to be any good at marathons. But since I did better at longer distances, and I've been doing 30-mile training runs for a few years to make my time to make my marathons better, I thought, well, because I do better at longer distances and I'm strong at the end, I would do better at ultras. It didn't dawn on me that everyone who moved up to ultras did it because they were stronger at the longer <laughs> distances and better. So I didn't really gain anything, but except there's more fun to be had. There's such a variety of different things you can do running ultras. It's it's not not, uh, it's not all this, the same race. Yeah, I think it's pretty common for people to, st to, to move up. It wasn't for Gary because it didn't exist back then, but social media has made such a difference. Uh, people go from couch to 5K, and they get a lot of praise for that. Then they, then after they're doing their third 5K, people go, you know, big deal. They get one like for that. So they do a half marathon and kind of they're back in, they're back in and, and that only lasts for a little while. So next it's marathon and, 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 and then you get older and you, and you can't go as fast. So, so you go further. Uh, that was what it was for me. I'd kind of reached my peak at, at a marathon as well. And I'd done Boston. So, uh, I thought, well, I need to try to go further. And it's just a lot of fun, especially about what, mile 68 and you get 32 to go. Crystal, have you done 100 yet? No, Tunnel Hill is going to be my first. No. <laughs> You'll find out. Yeah. About mile 68 and you're past all the, the 50K, then 50 miles, then 100K, and you hit that zone where, ugh, the 60s, the 70s. When you get to the late 80s, then you know you've got it. <laughs> it's not so you kind of smell the bar in the end, but it, you hit a zone in there where all you want to do is cuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I, I didn't want to quit. So I just cussed. <laughs> well, well, you know, Steve, Corey is coaching both Crystal and I for the Tunnel Hill. Good deal. So we're both expecting what, like 10 hour finishes? 11 hour finishes? Oh, Crystal? oh yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> That's what he promised. So, <laughs> yeah. Then you've got. Then you'd only have uh, what sixty miles to go after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably I, I, true. I, I listened. Uh, Nathan Dewall is a good friend of mine. In fact, he was at our house over the weekend. I listened to his podcast. Y'all had him on here last mm -hmm. week. He had some pretty good advice for for Tunnel Hill and for Crystal and why the finish rate is so low there. Uh, so if you listen to what he said, that made a lot of sense. A lot of it's what we've talked about before. You've got the first weekend of daylight savings time is gone. So it's dark early. You're not used to that. It's colder. And the worst thing I do to you is, is your car is at the mile 50 mark 
and I'll give you a 50 mile buckle and an official 50 mile time if you want to just get in your car and leave. Uh, so a lot of people do that. In fact, there were 260 people signed up for the 100 last year and 99 finished. Wow. Hmm. No, yeah. the 50 mile is going to be my quickest aid station. I am in and out. I will not sit down. Whatever I need and out. Yep, that's right. I, and my foot up your butt if you <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> you just need to tell yourself that there's one requirement if you're going to quit. Before you quit, you have to sit in a lawn chair at the point where you're going to stop for an hour. If you sit there an hour and you're still willing to quit, quit. If you sit there for an hour, you'll realize you can go on. You won't make it the hour, especially if it's cold. It would be better to go on than <laughs> you're better. To go. Oh. You'd be surprised at what just a little bit of rest does, too. I'm not talking about goofing around at every aid station, but come in at 50. Uh, I've told everybody that tries to quit, I tell them, why don't you go rest for a little bit? You know, get in your car, come back when the sun comes up. You still have a lot of time. And uh, some of them go on and they thank me for, for pushing them on. And the ones that quit, a large percentage read it and say, man, I wish I would have just gone. I'd have been okay. I don't think you'll quit. I think you'll do well. Nope. I saw you run it, run it, stars. She kicked my ass. She sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those two are great. At, at 2 a.m., I went and took a nap in the camper, and I never went back out, so I, I quit at the marathon. I was lazy. <laughs> oh, boy. Mr. Andy. Yes. You're up. Oh, okay. You want me to ask some questions or something like that? Yeah, why not? I'd be kind of quiet. So, uh, so as, as a race director, um, what was the first race that you put on? Uh and what do you remember the most about that race? And this is this is an interesting question for me because I've got a race that I put on uh, every spring. I've done it three times. And uh, and so I, I understand the challenges of what it takes to put a race on. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear about that first one that you put on. That needs to be Gary because that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'd like to hear from both of you on that. So okay. we'll hear from Gary first. But, yeah. Simultaneously? Yeah. Not, you know, <laughs> talk at the same time or, take, or you know. Whatever you guys want to do. We'll hear from you first. <laughs> the first ultra I put on was the strolling gym, and it was because I once I'd made the decision to run an ultra, the nearest races to run were either in New York City or Miami. And they had had a 50-miler in Atlanta the year before, but they were going to discontinue it because they only had four entrants. So the only way to have an ultra within any reasonable distance I could get to it was to put it on. So I took some of my favorite training courses and strung them together and made a really nice, pretty course. And we had a 40-mile race the first year we had it. I think we had 22 starters, 19 finish. Mm -hmm. And only three people had ever run an ultra before. It's a lot different now. So next year for Australian Gym Medic will be the 40th. Anniversary. Next year will be the 40th, 40th running. Wow. And how many people do you expect to start? Uh, how many will start? I don't know. We, it looks like we should fill up our 200 spots for entrance, but you never know these days how many of those will turn into bodies at the starting line. We've added some races as well uh, uh, to Strolling Gym. Now we have a marathon and a 10K, and next year we're going to add a half marathon. I'm, I think we'll hit 400 runners next year. Yeah. Oh, maybe 500. If you're lucky. That's a good one. You should come see that one. Uh, walking Tennessee, walking horse country. It's beautiful. Uh, people who have never been here just, they just can't believe how pretty it is and, and you know, can't understand why they haven't been here before and they come back. Yeah. Our new half marathon course is absolutely stunning. And it's pretty too. <laughs> yes. People are going to remember that they did a half marathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, hopefully we'll get to see that. Uh, Naresh, do you know what Crystal has talked me into next year? Uh, no. She, I just get the blame for this stuff. She, I'm not- yes, I'm blaming you for everything. So, it was it Tunnel Hill? No. Vol State? No, no not, not Vol State next year. But she has talked me in to a little something we're going to call Durbin's Despair. She <laughs> said we have huh. to run every race that Durban Race Management puts on next year. Wow. 
<laughs> you know that includes Wow, athlete. Crystal. I don't think she's a friend, do you? <laughs> nah, she hates you, man. Drop her now. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any advice for us, Steve or, or Gary? Is, is this a stupid oh. challenge? Well, first off, how many races is that? Well, it starts with Land Between the Lakes Trail Runs. That's that's one of Naresh's first races, I believe. Uh, yeah. It's in March. Beautiful uh, in western Kentucky. Grand Rivers goes through a uh, uh, 11-mile loop that you can run anywhere from half marathon to 50 miles on. That was my the first race that I started. And next year will be the 15th running. We've had as many as 950 runners at that one. Uh, wow. And then next would be uh, Sterling Jim, May the 5th, maybe next year. Uh, after that, we have Run Under the Stars series. It should be at least three of those, maybe four. Um, then we go to Barkley Fall Classic. Fall Classic. Right. So uh, you'll like that one. It's a piece of cake. That's yeah, that should be that's, that's that the easy be, one, right? <laughs> yeah, you won't even need shoes for that. Uh, <laughs> then the Tunnel Hill. Uh, we I have a half marathon at Land Between the Lakes that Naresh was my guest speaker for last year. It's a road half marathon, really pretty, and it's that fall colors time of year at in Land Between the Lakes. So that's a yeah. great one too. It's just that a was beautiful time. voice. Got to get down there while we still have fall. That's right. Always. <laughs> That's right. I have to paint. Yeah, those are those are the races you'll get to do next year. I'm I'm excited that you're coming. Now I did read that uh, Barkley Fall Classic only has like a what a 37 percent finishing rate somewhere around there. Now, everyone finishes in some way or another. <laughs> some of them don't finish the race. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're going to get back to their cars at some point. <laughs> So I like that. So I can, no matter what, I can say I finished. Yeah, I just, I, I just don't go into details. <laughs> we have lined up this year transportation to retrieve people that don't make it around if they get over on the false far side. We've had a problem with people as far as the prison and refusing to go on. So we've got a special bus. It is lettered on the side. It says the bus of disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this year is Barkley Fall Classic. You guys should come down, just uh, hang around and watch and help. It, it's going to be a good one. We uh, Gary always is a master at tweaking the course, and uh, he did some heavy tweaking this year. It, 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 they're going to really enjoy this one. <laughs> Everyone will get out the course map the, when they register and check out the new course, and then they'll take their little plans that they worked out on paper at home and throw them in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> now it is a a fair representation of the big Barkley, correct? It's you get some of the nasty parts, but kind of marked about, out. It would be about four miles, four or five miles of the real, the real deal. Oh wow! And then wow. not any of it is easy, and the the course is set up so that it, it hits you when you're down. Oh, we do some pretty cool things that at the fall classic that even the big boy doesn't do or hasn't done yet by going inside brushy mountain state prison. Uh, we go in the admin building and down the cell block hall where they held James Earl Ray. And, uh, we've been down into the hole where they kept all the badasses. They've gone over the wall on the ladder, just right where James Earl Ray went over. Then down through that tunnel that you've seen in the movie. Then they go up the Big Rat, which is 2,000 feet of climb in one mile. But you can't get into talking much about the course because yeah, not that we're doing that. Not that we're doing that <laughs> this year. The day before the race. Not that we're doing that this year. That's things we've done in the past. Yeah. So um, I want to know too because you you do these races and, and you change them every year, and some of them are really quite complicated. There's very few that are real simple. Even the simple ones like Run Under the Stars, you decide to do them overnight. So it's kind of an ultra of your own where you're the logistics of it, you're sleep deprived. Does it does it get easier over the years for you? As to race run the races or no, to like to direct the races. I no, mean, it doesn't get easier. You always have to think and and imagine it from the runner's perspective and what you're presenting them with and how it's going to create sensations of great pleasure and joy. 
Yeah, <laughs> like the Fall Classic, it, running that course is a lot like getting a gentle massage. <laughs> <laughs> we like to uh, on races we put on. We we like to give people the whole package. Uh, you've been to Six Flags, and, and they have some pretty nice roller coasters and such, right? Um, and the rides at Six Flags are great, okay? But if you go to Disney, they have the same ride, but it's contained within this whole theme. Uh, so that's what we, we try to give them the whole package, Disney of, of uh, You like races. to work a theme through the race where there's certain aspects of it that they'll look at rather than say, hey, that's tied to this. Yep. It's the... uh well, the bib pumps, but I don't think. We, we tell them what right. we've done before. The bib, the bib punches have messages on them. It, it's in lieu of checkpoints, we have little, little squares on the bottom of your bib, and you get reach each checkpoint, they punch it for you to show you've been there. And for those that pay attention and look at the end, there's a message on the bib that ties in with the theme of the race and other aspects of the weekend. Just something to. Just one more Tweak thing. The mind. Like la- uh, the first year with the message, and I just kind of lucked into that. I saw I had an L and an A and a Z and a heart. So I, I had them punch the bibs in a sequence where it said, I heart lad. <laughs> and <laughs> they got a kick out of that. So last year we thought, hey, we're going over the wall. So the was a picture of Red Mountain Prison, the wall. And if they got their bib punched at, at the church and the various places, and they got them all. It said, I escaped. So um, just silly little, little stuff. The, the shirts that we gave last year were official inmate shirts, the old uh, black and white style shirts. And Which just, is not easy to buy no, hell a prison no. uniforms. From <laughs> it a took about a year to buy. Them. <laughs> it's they not said, a prison surplus store. There, there are stores that sell to... to uh, they don't even call them prisons anymore. No, they, well, yeah, the like correction centers. Correctional. Yeah. What we had to do was we had to get the prison uniform and we, we marked it on the back. It said, it said Brushy Mountain State Prison, which by using the word prison, no one says printing. We've got to make it where law enforcement doesn't as, as, as one of our runners for an actual escape. Because yeah, Naresh knows what that's like. Their prison number was actually oh yeah it was oh nine one seven two oh one seven but it was on there looking like a prison number and we had to guarantee that we weren't gonna give the pants out as well just the shirt and to instruct people do not wear striped pants with this <laughs> shirt <laughs> you know you should add some kind of special reward though if you do get picked up falsely as an escaped convict you know. You, you could come run the Big Barkley or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you get free entry to the next race. So you know, you know, on Heartland Running Podcast. The one, one of the go. good things about the Fall Classic is actually reduce some pressure entry demand for the Big Barkley because there's a lot more people who arrive at, at the Fall Classic saying, I want this to be a stepping stone to the big race. <laughs> they leave saying... I don't want to do anything <laughs> worse than this. <laughs> we typically uh, have runners. The winning time for Barkley Fall Classic 50K is three, at least three hours longer than their. Yeah, I don't know what, what they typically run a 50K. Is. Wow. Seven, yeah, 719, 720. And these are really good it's mostly because they have been screwing around on the route. <laughs> when you take a mile, some of these people are coming out, oh, they did a mile in an hour 45. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, it's uh, rat- <laughs> there's a lot of obstacles. It's a mile. A lot of times, rat draw's not been cut in the fall either, so the briars are literally over your head. And you're kind of like a little rabbit trying to run under one of the briars doesn't work too well either. Uh, arms and legs are, are shredded pretty much. Oh, joy. <laughs> well, just what you want. <laughs> Gary has a cool race coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. That he, that, uh, a race for the ages. Yes, that, that's one of my favorite. We have right now 32 entrants that are over 70 years old. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. It's, uh, it's uh, the gathering of the 
the old guys with me back in the 70s and uh, a, lot, a lot of luminaries they just I, I reached a point where the time limits have started well the time limits are just a real issue there's a limited number of altars I can participate in and a lot of my old friends are in the same boat so at the race for the ages it's a one mile loop and you get to run as many hours as you are years old Oh, shit. <laughs> so there, wow. it's like 50 starting times. The the oldest guy is 86. Wow. And the whole thing ends up on Labor Day. So he'll be starting at 10 o'clock Thursday night. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then the 85-year-old starts at 11. And so on down every hour, you start a few more old guys out there. So everyone, every single one or for an hour just to be Youngest and fastest thing on the track. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing. It's, it's worth the race just to walk around and hear the stories because, of course, these stories were pre internet. They weren't immortalized on blogs and permanently out there for everyone to read. Now, is it, in that way, they were more malleable. Now, this was a race that you started? Yes. It, uh, we, well, the, the one where the Stephen F. Perry was. I started having 100 milers with relaxed time limits for myself and for old guys. It's just, you know, you have a 100,000 mile warranty on your body. You may not know it yet, but after you pass 100,000 miles, you're out of warranty. And you know what happens when stuff is out of warranty. So you just, you know, can't make time. And, but you still like to get out and go. So. We we did two or three different versions of, of that along different places and then settled on the arc. It came up with the idea for the arc that everyone would need to run the number of hours of their age because now it's a straight contest. If you're if you're under forty eight, you still get to run forty eight hours. So it's really it's like a forty eight hour race, but everyone that's more than forty eight years old gets so many hours head start. Last year, six of, seven of our top ten, six of our top ten were over 70 years old. So everyone's really competing head to head to start out way behind all the legends of the sport. And, and we make a program. We have left the, the first year we had 15 people that had run 100 miles and yeah, it was a crazy amount. Plus, Ann Trayson was there. And yeah, was we had the amazing. strongest ultra marathon field ever assembled in the United States, except it was 30 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> what, one thing you find out about these old guys, too, it's not like today's crowd where, you know, they may go to a race with the goal in mind of uh, 50 miles, marathon, 100 miles, whatever. It, when they hit that, they go home, even if there's six more or seven more hours to go in the race. Those old guys, they, they, hell no, I got 15 more minutes. So when I'm out there, I'm afraid to ever go sit down because I don't want to give up a spot. You work too hard to get to move up a spot. So you have to stay out there. And then we have a banquet afterwards. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, back when the marathon the ultras you could run were in, War Trace, Miami, in New York City, when you went to a race, it was a rare occasion. And everybody, you saw the people that liked what you liked, and there weren't many of us. And it was your rare chance to be together. We'd, we'd stay around the race forever, not wanting to go home, because we weren't going to see anybody else that, that shared this interest for three or four months. And that's if you raced a lot. That's right. Even 15 years ago, when we started Land Between the Lakes, there was one other ultra in Kentucky. That's it. And that was, uh, Herb Hedgecock race over there yeah. in Moorhead. But there were, when I did Umstead in 2004, maybe 15 or 1700 in the whole United States. It's just crazy. And I think there were like two or three Heartland running podcasts back then, but outside of that, there were much. <laughs> The race for the ages has spots open. We we got lots and lots of old guys over ah. sixty. We've got a huge field, but there's none of the not many of the young people come. I don't think they want to get like Jesus and grandpas. Oh, okay. That's one thing that's sick. It's another thing. That's one. <laughs> well, we can definitely put a call out on our social media outlets and everything. 
to to get people there. What what's the exact date of it? It uh, it finishes at noon on Labor, Labor Day, Day weekend. Okay. The, the exact starting time depends on, on your how age. old you are. Right. Okay. Gotcha. But everyone will start on noon on Saturday. Okay. And there's a there's a Facebook group on it as well. A race for the yeah, ages. Yeah, race for the ages mm-hmm. Facebook group. If you want to join that, it's got a lot of really cool pictures before and after and stuff like that on there. Yeah. We we used to go in and we put in a lot of pictures over the years of people back then and and now. You change. <laughs> I, I look, Gary, I think Crystal has a question for you. Uh, and I, I think she is getting coaxed into asking this one by your pal sitting next to you. Something about a little race you're doing soon, maybe? Crystal? Yeah, there, there is something about a um, transcon next year. Um, something about, what is it and what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> I, 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 I think you should read the quoted text. Well, what is the quoted text? <laughs> Did it say something like idiot or... <laughs> <laughs> That's a separate question. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping to to attempt to transform. It was something that I mean, I mean, don't all of us think in the back of our mind we'd like to run across the country someday? And I always figured I would, and then I, but it was just a Sunday thing when I got older and retired. And, whatever, and I had a heel injury last year that really gave me a lot of trouble, and I was wondering what my running future was, and I realized the window to do that is between when you don't have a real job anymore and when your body won't make it, and I was afraid that I'm at the back end of my window, so I decided I needed to set it up and do it, and I've been doing the preliminary planning and did a shakedown cruise to see what I could physically handle, and I can't go fast and I can't cover much mileage, but I can, I can still go. You look pretty good on the five miles today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was a, I was tearing it up. I was going at a thousand mile pace. There you are. The one thing I'm doing is practicing the pace you want to run <laughs> for 2,000 miles. <laughs> okay. So give us a description of what the transcon is. Where you run from one coast to the other. I wanted to run US 20 before. Because it's a long highway and it goes from Boston to Newport, Oregon, and uh, it just seemed like an interesting, an interesting route upstate New York and along the Great Lakes and through Chicago, and then a thousand miles of corn. <laughs> <laughs> and we That's know you like corn. <laughs> corn. Plenty of restroom stops there. <laughs> And then the deserts and high mountain passes. I think the high the high spot I go through is like nine thousand five hundred forty eight feet. So mm. it, it should be a great deal of an adventure. Oh, it sounds like it. Oh, it's going to be an epic adventure, Gary. I read that story and I'm like, man, wish I'm there to join a few sections with you. I figured that somewhere along the way I would just pop into a store to get something to eat or drink, and there you would be sitting in the chairs over in the where the tables are <laughs> with bags of ice on his feet. <laughs> bags of ice on your feet. Gary, I, I have one question I, I have to ask, and this was on on some notes Miss Crystal was kind enough to put together. Something about you got shot once during a race. Yeah, I got <laughs> shot during a race. It's all excited. <laughs> I was really, actually, it was just after the halfway mark, and I had not been having a good day. I was running relatively poorly, and there was some guy hunting up in a field off to the side. It was this near Snow Hill School, right down by outside of Chattanooga, outside Wooloo. And the guy shot into the people running down the road, and of course, I would be the one. It was it was hunting quail, so it was bird shot, <laughs> and it all the road around me and then bounced up and where it hit my clothes it bounced off but everywhere it hit skin it just stuck in so I had all the little pellets stuck in my leg <laughs> and man I was so mad I just I turned <laughs> and I, if I started up the hill after him I would have probably killed him with my bare hands but he pointed his shotgun at me <laughs> <laughs> he still has a gun <laughs> So I went down and I was just, I was furious. 
and I told the cop we were doing traffic control at the next station. I show him my leg, and of course, everywhere the little pellet stuck, there's blood running down your leg, so it looks pretty gruesome. And I said, you know, this is asshole just shot me with a shotgun and I want to press charges when I get to the finish line. (laughs) 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 Really well. I actually (laughs) ended up with a pretty decent time. Uh, They had a kind of, I think that the cop just went and told the guy, you need to meet the book. And he was long gone by the time I got to the finish line. Oh, I wasn't going to trash the race just to have him thrown in jail because the entry fee was like 20 bucks or something. And that's not <laughs> just right. that, that is pretty hardcore, getting shot and still finishing the race. <laughs> I, I ran, but it wasn't really hurt. I was just mad. <laughs> I will say this. There were people in front of me and behind me when the guy shot and hit me. They both vanished. I was in the biggest <laughs> clear. <laughs> I remember they were shooting me out to shoot, but they were not throwing themselves in front of me and might to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I only have one last question for you, and then I'll open it up to my counterparts. Um, and the big thing, you guys have been around for a while. What do you think is the biggest change you've seen in in running in general, ultra running specifically over the years, for the good and for the worse? For me, it's just the sheer numbers. Uh, you know, before a marathon was people's goal to run a marathon, and uh, now the hundreds, the new marathon. It seems like, uh, yeah, in, in fact, that's why I started Tunnel Hill, because kind of knew that, and uh, you could see you could see that was the direction people were going, and and the buddies, and and we, of course we had the Barkley and some really hard, difficult races, bad water and such. So I thought, well, I'll go the opposite and go. This this is the easiest hundred. This is the fastest hundred. Uh, so it's worked out well so far. But for me, the sheer numbers, social media is a huge impact. If you're not on on Facebook and paying attention to what's going on there, then I think you're missing out a lot. Uh, it's a big resource uh, uh, to use for for getting information out to runners, and um, so I like it. I'll tell them. I've been looking at it during the podcast, even. <laughs> but uh, I think those are the biggest things for me. I, I, again, I've not been in it. Uh, 17, 18 years where Gary's been in it for 50. So, uh, he's, he has a lot more to say about it than, than I would. <laughs> uh, changes. Those are the changes for me. I think the, the biggest change I see is that people, uh, people enter races and then don't go. And when they enter races and go, they're so anxious to get gone that they leave before it's over to go home. And it was, when you only had a handful of races and you had to travel a long way to do them, you, if you signed up, you went. And if you went, you ran. And if you ran, you stayed. And if you stayed, they had stuff before the race and stuff after the race where people could get together. They 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 miss a lot by not uh, enjoying that help. Okay, I, I've got a question that uh, I've been kind of thinking about asking this Um you know, just like this podcast, uh, there's someone that's on the other end and they've got this in their earphones. And they're listening to it and they're that type of person. But, uh, you know, you guys put on very unique races and, uh, these long distance races. And, and so, you know, there's someone that's signing up for that. Uh, what is that type of person that signs up for those races? What is that type of person that is willing to put themselves through? You know, a lot of time out there on the trail or maybe some really difficult, hard, um, hard work to get them to the finish line. You know, what is that type of person that does that? I, I was going to say the races that I put in really kind of run across the, the gamut. The, the strolling gym is more, it's an every person race. Uh, the Barkley is a race where that you have very little chance of finishing and you really have to do some exceptional things if you're if you're going to finish. The Vol State is is 
also super hard, but it's within reach of anyone who wants to do it. So you get really different people that different races appeal to. The uh, the the backyard race, the four miles an hour until only one person is left. That appeals to the type of person who just really likes the sheer human to human competition. It's an easy loop. It's a matter of who can keep answering the bell on and on and on every hour, hour after hour for days. And I, I think that's one of the things that I enjoy seeing the different kinds of things that you can set up to do. The, the race for the ages is half social event. A lot of the old guys are not there and not really able at this point to get competitive. The ones that still like to race, even though that they're old and grizzled, they, uh, you put them in a format where they get ahead. You can ask these young guys. They're not easy to run them down. They're not going to give it to you. So it's, it's a, a lot of different things for a lot of different people. The fall classic is, you know, again, there are people who overlap from race to race, but the particular appeal of each race is for different reasons. I think that's why we try to have a, uh, such a variety. You know, Run Under the Stars is a nighttime race. It's good for, uh, it's great for like uh, if you're practicing for a 24 hour or a 100 miler where you have to be out there at night. So you try to figure out how you're going to handle your nutrition at night when you're not used to eating. Uh, just being awake, running, uh, and, and it's flat. That's different, too. A lot of people aren't used to just running flat the whole time. And it's all night. Yeah. And I can walk past people who find out they can't go all night without sleeping. Yeah, Gary's in, Gary's in the top ten all the time uh, uh, at Run Under the Stars. So, uh, yeah, we do, a trail, we do trail races. We do road races. Very difficult. Not so difficult. Um, yeah, it's just it's just uh, to try to appeal to something for everybody. Uh, the people that run races, I think they like to challenge themselves. Uh, so we have have uh, different challenges out there for them. Uh, uh, never run a race or never run. Period. Where I finished running, I go, damn, I wish I wouldn't have ran. Uh, and I think most people get that same kind of feeling after they run. They're glad they did. And, and, you know, you wake up some days you don't even want to go out there uh, and you think, oh, man, I don't want to go. And you have a great day. Other times you're in, in excellent condition and uh, it's just not your day. But my worst Ironman was Wisconsin and and I was in terrific shape. I'd ridden like 15 centuries that year and I was capable of a 315 marathon. And uh, hell, I was terrible. I finished, but it was terrible. And other times it didn't want to go at all, like, uh, ancient oaks one year and, and, uh, had strep throat and all that and wound up second over it. So who, who knows? Go out there. The main thing, get out there and, and see. Oh, and I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do. What can, trying to see what they can do. They, they like to challenge themselves. Yeah. I, I heard a quote by, by Gary the other day. I think it was on YouTube or something that I absolutely love that if you're, you're not experiencing some suffering how do you know when you feel good <laughs> <laughs> it only makes sense to me yes it does very good <laughs> well, well gentlemen we we told you we were going to take about 50 minutes of your time and i think we're at like almost an hour and a half i'm, I'm sure you're wanting to get your burgers cooked <laughs> and uh, i'm gonna have to drive over to get some of those i think i'm only six or seven hours away so I'll, I'll be right over there. We wanted to uh, thank you so much for honoring this show by coming on. Uh, Steve, if someone's yeah. interested in one of your amazing races, what's the best way to find out about them? You can go to DurbanRaceManagement.com, and uh, you can find all the races on there. Uh, we're working to upgrade the website a little bit. and We're always trying to make improvements uh, to the race. And our races, Gary and I, the races we do together, you can find them on there as well. And um, if anybody ever, you know, I can point you in the right direction for any of Gary's races as, as well. So that's the best way to find any DurbanRaceManagement.com. Mm -hmm. Mention Heart, Heartland Running and get a special discount. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. We'll wow. definitely put links to the, if in they the show notes. That and Crystal are doing all the races. I mean, that they're all going to want to come anyway. Dang I'll right. be sold out of every race. Dang it. Now, are there still 
space available at Tunnel Hill if people are interested? It's, it's getting, I think we're at about 570. They, they, every year that we don't screw it all up for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, they let us add more. So we started at, at 300 and now we're up to 600 allowed. So we have 570 in. I usually count on about 10% no shows. So I can probably take about a hundred more. I haven't really advertised that it's getting that close to filling because I think it will fill up rapidly after that. There, there are several hundred on the watch list. So I'm saying if you want to run Tunnel Hill, you probably need to sign up, uh, pretty quickly. I'm the kind of guy that hates to say no to, to anybody. So, uh, you know, <laughs> that's my function in our partnership. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why we work well together. You know, Gary is smart. He'll say, no, we, we need to have limits because then it creates more demand and, and they come back. And I'm thinking, if we got an opportunity to bring in 20 more people, let's do it. And so it will go back and forth about a lot of stuff like that. But, but uh, I think it works out well. When we do journey runs together. Every, we are good anywhere we go. If we walk into a biker bar or, <laughs> you know, some, some old guy up in a holler that thinks we're too close to his still, <laughs> then I talk. If we're, if we stop in an office building and, and uh, people are dressed nice and we expect to have a dress code, Steve talks to us. <laughs> anywhere we go, we're good. So it's like yin and yang. <laughs> because he's with you. <laughs> We've been on walks before where we'll, we always try to go through the town square uh, of these old places because they're so cool. And we've gotten 500, 200 yards down the road and had people run after us and say, wait, 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 come back. Can you come back and talk to our editor? She says there's got to be a story here. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know who they were chasing me or him. I guess it depends on where on where we were. People come out of their house to see what we're doing, or they stop their car, and we we have to sit there and say that one's yours. This way, this guy has a gun, Gary. That's yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've had a lot of fun over the. 11 or 12 years that we've been doing journey walks. I kind of hate to see his big map fill up because we haven't really had one since uh, he got Unicoi County last year, which was the 95th. Oh, that was ugly. <laughs> now, do you have all the counties done? I got all the counties done, and I extended my uh, streak of years with a 30-miler to what was it last year? Was oh, 100? It? No, the, the number of <laughs> years, like 40 Forty something. I thought you were one hundred and twenty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have that injury all year, and we, I got to the middle of July, and I, just, I told him, I said, "Well, I don't know that this is going to heal in time for me to do a thirty mile or so. We just need to pick a weekend, and by God, go do it, no matter what." And we did the thirty mile. What did it take? It took like twenty three hours to do thirty miles. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> That included about an hour interview with that one dude, though. I haven't got my 30 mile in this year yet, although I've done a bunch of 26, 28 type stuff, but I want to do it at our. So yeah. I have to get serious <laughs> if they want to throw it out. I but you should, you got to come check out the Barkley Fall Classic. You'll be glad you did. We'll have a good job for you where you can see a lot of suffering. Les, uh, Naresh used to always, uh, send me messages on every journey walk. Send lots of pictures of last suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still got the uh, rush? The rush is still Oh, here. yeah, I'm here, Gary. I'm here. Remember so, that? <laughs> did, did you tell them? Did you inform, let them know? Because I guess you inter interviewed with them earlier. That this is yeah. my son. Yeah, he said that. That he used to come down on the Sundays. It was, it was really good times. He would come down, we would do some miles and then 
Naresh can cook like no one else. You sit there and look in the kitchen, and there's nothing left but a few random items. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. Naresh can put it together, mix in spices, and make something delicious and hot. Yeah, Naresh, Naresh and is hot. Naresh, Naresh and is hot. And hot. As soon as I get started, Sandra will be sitting outside cursing us for messing up the kitchen and making everything hot. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, remember those days when we used to eat all the pounds and pounds of beef liver with habaneros? Oh, God, uh, man. Me and Ash had some beef liver feasts that were beyond uh, belief. And moonshine. Was, and moonshine. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> rattlesnake. Uh, we had rattlesnake day. Oh, rattlesnakes, moonshine. I mean, I really miss you guys. And Steve, Gary, you guys are the reason I am who I am today. All my adventure runs, <laughs> rides, and all the charity activities that's coming through. Thank you for toughening was, up. Good. A good Hindu boy when we met him. <laughs> and now look at him. <laughs> Not just good. I was a gullible, innocent Indian boy until I showed up to Shelbyville, Tennessee. <laughs> All he needed was some fried rattlesnake and moonshine, and he was ready to. <laughs> ready to the last time Naresh was at our house, he had us watch a, a movie, Meet the Patels. And he said, Meet if you want, to know my, you want to know my life, watch this show. So if you haven't seen Meet the Patels, it's pretty cool. Oh, that's on my list now. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean. <laughs> Everyone asks me, so what's your goal for this trip? I'm right now in South India. I said, like, if I leave the, if I leave the country without a wife, that's the biggest <laughs> success of my trip. <laughs> are, are your parents trying to, the uh, side. the real dark side? So Gary, if you get a call from my parents asking if Naresh is married, please tell it, tell them. I'm married and I have two kids in Shelbyville. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cook you some real good curry when I'm next time there. <laughs> well, let you claim my kids, but they're the same age as you. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> I, I, I am depending on you guys. Please watch my back. Yeah. Do, do you have any, uh, do you have any adventures coming up, Naresh? Uh, just a couple of runs, journey runs in the big mountains in the Himalayas. But uh, other than that, just training and enjoying, uh, just curry loading right now. Curry loading. Uh, enjoying being at home. Oh, Yeah, cool. forget about carbo loading, just curry loading right now. <laughs> <laughs> While you're in the Himalayas, you need to look for this Nepali guy who's up there training so that he can outdo you at the bar. He just wants to beat the Indian guy's distance. Time. I'll find him, Gary. I'll find him. I'll have a word. <laughs> <laughs> How many can there be? <laughs> yeah. Easy to find out. Oh, that is great, great, great. Well, again, we want to thank everyone for showing up. This has been a great conversation. Um, everyone can head over to heartlandrunning.com and you can look at all of our geeky goodness, get the expanded show notes all our videos, everything. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Heartland Running Podcast. I know that's where I spend most of my time. And as always, if you've liked this show, please be sure to tell a friend. So until next time, we'll talk to you later. Okay, that's the official recording. <laughs> and I'll add the music <laughs> and everything Sweet. later. I, I gotta I, tell you, the guy down here with his Andy. chin on his hand... Andy. Has intimidated mm -hmm. the shit out of me the whole time. He is <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I know. I think well, you had that printed on a business card. <laughs> <laughs> I intimidated <laughs> Laz. <laughs> I mean, that expression, that look, nobody's going to fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I have to tell you, I've got 25 employees at my business. And that's that's usually how I look all day long. <laughs> no, I, I, have a really, I have a really nice it's guy. Like, the beard is good because no one can see if you do smile. You let your mustache grow long so that it looks a perpetual frown. And then 
the uh, the old thing where you end up having to wear glasses is good because you just do this. <laughs> <laughs> you just look down the red sea rise. Your glasses it. <laughs> oh, boy. and then you. Stay. Okay, I have <laughs> one small favor to ask of Gary and Steve. If they could give me a nice sound bite that just says, this is Gary Cantrell and Steve Durbin, and you're listening to the Heartland, Heartland Running Podcast, I would be forever your devoted servant. You want to say it at the same time? Yeah, you can just do so I'm so and so. Together. I was going to let you say, this is Steve Durbin, and I'll say, okay, cool. and this is not. And then we can say, yeah, okay, this is Steve Durbin, and this is not. Because that's Gary Cantrell. <laughs> You can't get away! Start again. Oh, that's I think that's it right there. Listen to Heartland. Running podcast. Powered by Sword. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is going to be epic show, man. It really is. Thanks for calling in. Characters. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in Kerala right now. Beautiful place. Good food. I was just talking about you, Gary. We had a killer fish, uh, fish curry today. You would just oh. love it so hot and so delicious. <laughs> you, you sounded a, a little uh, too romantic there. <laughs> yeah. I need to get you to India, get you all the ganja in the north and all the fish curry in the south. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that now, on the postcard one. Yeah, Maybe that's going to be one. Like- Sorry, what does that see? Have you eaten any more of those chicken wings that I saw you on? Did you guys see the YouTube video of Naresh eating the chicken wings? No, I haven't oh, seen that one. Yeah. Oh, tell them about that, Naresh. Uh, I'm, I just crave for pain, Stephen. So this is an <laughs> event where you have to eat the hottest food. So hot food is measured in Scoville. It's a scale of measurement. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are chicken wings that is cooked in Naga Jalekia, which is one of the world's hottest pepper, they are rated at 1.4 million scoble. Oh my gosh. So you, you eat to, I mean, to put things in perspective, the hottest habanero is like 700 scoble. So you're talking 1.4 million. Oh yeah. What is that you have there? I can see what we're showing. <laughs> yeah. So you eat 12 wings in under 10 minutes. And after you finish, no touching napkin, no touching water, and you sit there for five more minutes to oh. let that pain kill you. Oh. And I set a PR, and my record went on the wall, and I get on the house every time I go there. <laughs> but the re- the event is not over. What goes in should come out. And the next day morning, just like Gary's cornfield story, yeah, what happened <laughs> next day morning in the toilet, I'll take it to the grave. What happened there? <laughs> I was yelling so much in the bathroom. My flatmate thought I was in grave danger and he was going to call 911. I had to ask him to not do that and instead asked him to fill a Ziploc bag full of ice and slide it under the door. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, hanging out with these two guys. I don't know. I'm like craving for more pain and regretting the next day morning why I'm doing it. (laughs) And Naresh, you just gave me some great sound bites. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Did you record all that? Shut uh, up. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Did you look that up? What, was that on YouTube, Naresh? Yeah, it was on YouTube uh, under my channel, Naresh Kumar. You'll see that video. Real suffering. I, okay, miss- I, I need to slip. I, see that. I need to slip one of those in Gary's food one of these days. <laughs> that is great uh, but I can't wait for you guys to join me in India one day do a journey run here it'll be like real good lots of curry people are super friendly and hospitable and yeah, cost less than nothing Yay. especially now a dollar with 67 rupees you won't believe man I mean I had today's lunch costed me 50 cents and I walked, I had to roll outside the restaurant, tummy full of good food. It was so good. <laughs> nice. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Not, not right One now, day. Crystal. 
with that. We're not going to India right now. Well, no. In a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> they would laugh. Because neither of me or would look to talk to me. We'll stay with Naresh and his wife. <laughs> why? Why? Why do, you, why do you? Why do you hate me so much? Why? Hey, uh, Naresh, you know how we kind of used you to surprise Steve and Gary? Well, I think they have a uh, surprise about your arranged marriage. <laughs> no, <laughs> you'll be there tonight at seven thirty. <laughs> Don't even wish that for me, it. even in your dreams. <laughs> they placed this call so that your parents could pinpoint exactly where you were. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you're traveling. Yeah, that's my excuse. Because I, I, it know, was funny. Even this trip, when I landed here, my dad was kind of, "Why didn't you put on some pants today? I have, I have a friend's place to go to. I think they would love to meet you." Anytime he asked me to put on some pants. I know it's a trap because the girl's <laughs> parents don't want to see you in shorts. <laughs> and my mom would be like, why don't you just shave off your beard? You look more better without a beard. All these are signs that they are going to drag me to, to some arranged marriage. So I've learned over the years to you know, dodge all those and run away. <laughs> Uh, you guys should watch that documentary. I'm not kidding. It's called Meet the Patels. You will know my suffering when you watch that <laughs> documentary. <laughs> right, yeah. is it, it was on Netflix. I'm not sure if it still is or not. It, 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 it is still on Netflix. All right. Good. Well, I'm going to hang up, guys. So thank you so much for having me on the show, Steven. Hey, thank you for awesome coming on last sharing minute. stories. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Rush. Thank you. All right, go Laz, get some sleep. I'll yeah, call hungry. you very soon. Was that Steve? There are probably a hundred stories for everything we could think of offhand. <laughs> yeah, so many stories, especially with these two. But uh, thanks, Gary. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Naresh. Keep inspiring the world. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, Crystal. Bye. Bye. See you, Naresh. See ya. Oh, that was good to have him on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for having him on. Oh, yeah. I, I, I uh, contacted him. Two days ago, I think, and I said, "Hey, we're gonna have Gary and Steve on." He's like, "Oh, that'll be so great!" And I was like, "Can you make it?" And he's like, <laughs> "I'm traveling, but I'll find Wi-Fi." <laughs> 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 so this morning he said, "I think I can make it. I'll, I'll let you know." And I said, "We're about to record," and then finally he's like, "Okay, I can get on." So we didn't we yeah. didn't know for sure until the last minute. <laughs> well, that's good to have Marash on there. He's a, he's awesome. He's an amazing guy. I uh, mm -hmm. I I I listened to his episode. I've listened to it over a few times, and I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you for introducing us to Naresh, Steve. That was uh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It only took us six months. I think of anybody, if I think of anybody, I can't think of anybody cooler than the guy next to me. But <laughs> there's some other guys out there. I could probably introduce you too. <laughs> All right, hey guys, I'm gonna go ahead and jet so that way I can get back to the plant and uh, get get the day shut down because nobody's been uh, working. <laughs> there, there's no telling it could have caught fire and or people are just giving stuff away at the retail store. So anyway, uh, anyway, thank you very much, Steve, Gary. It was a delight. I can't wait for the show to come out. Uh, and very nice to meet you guys. And hopefully, I can come out and do some of you guys' races sometime. Yeah, cool. You're you're welcome anytime. All right, sounds great. Thank you very much. I'll talk, see you guys later. Talk to you later, Andy. Bye, Andy. Okay. Right. Then there were two. Then there were two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no life. I can stay on all day and night. So <laughs> kind of like the last man standing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outlast two. Crystal, you're looking a little sleepy up there. What's that? I said, who's going to outlast two? You look a little sleepy. <laughs> oh no way. <laughs> I took him down last time. I can take him down. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not intimidated. Yeah. Steve, did I did I tell you about yeah, that? You in Kansas? <laughs> Are you guys in Kansas? I'm. I'm in Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Missouri. 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 Well, I'm in the Missouri part of Missouri. There's a in the Missouri part. Oh. Yeah. There's there's Missouri and Missouri. <laughs> yeah. I'm up. In, I'm in Ohio. But we're all Ohio. Yeah. Ohio. Um, just outside Cincinnati. But aren't you from Canada? Uh, I am, yes. 
Yes, I'm from Canada. I moved here in 2004. Yeah, it is kind of breaking up a little bit. There we go. Is she frozen? No, she's back. He asked if it took you a while to get rid of the A. A? Uh, you know how everything A. You know what? I think I dropped the accent really fast because everyone says you don't sound Canadian. And then when I go home, all my family goes, you sound American. So I, I assimilated. <laughs> At least you don't sound like you're from Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd give me a real hard time then. Well, Ozarks aren't much right. better. No accent. Tennessee to find people who speak English without an accent. But but she does have that uh, Canadian extra niceness to her. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Always. She couldn't get rid of the pretty accent, pretty right? good runner too. Yes, pretty, she is. pretty impressive at right. Oh, thank you. It was, you yeah. motivated me, so I was very grateful you'll, for that. You'll be fine at, at Tunnel Hill. Yeah. I'm excited. Just don't quit. I won't let you quit. No, I'm not going. <laughs> well, well, Crystal and I are doing the Hawk 50 here in, what, three, three and a half weeks? Three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks, yeah. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> no. I know once I started getting close to a big race, I'd put bubble wrap around and walk around the last two or three weeks because you're so afraid you're going to get hurt. Back before hell, there wasn't enough braces, so you, you sure as heck didn't want to get hurt two weeks before a oh, race God. you've been training for for a it year. It was a phenomenon. Always a week before the race, you think, oh, man, the pain in my knee. Oh, oh my yeah. Foot. Everything. Oh. Everything. And it's like you can't shake it. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. I'm not going to be able to ride. <laughs> Then you, after a while, you watching TV, you're sitting around reading a book, and you forget about it, and you realize, oh, hey, quit hurting. <laughs> <laughs> Your mind knows what's coming, and it's trying to think of a reason for you to not do That's it. That's right. Oh, please don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Crystal, she's trying to talk me into bad water and all this stuff, and I'm like, let me get through Tunnel Hill first. <laughs> yeah. I have his five-year plan set out for him. Yeah, so. <laughs> you have a, a chance to do. If you have a chance to do races, do them because you never know when you're not going to be able to. I That's went right. from being pretty fast to uh, when my back kind of went to hell in uh, oh, about an eight-month period, and then I struggled through for a while uh, because I had such great conditioning. But but you know it, that goes away eventually too. So if, if you have an opportunity to do a race you've wanted to do, you better do it. That doesn't mean do a race every weekend and end up hurting yourself because of that. But right. target a few races that you really want to do and do them while you can. That's good advice. Yeah, you come along to a time with or without injuries where you just you feel like you're doing the same thing you've always done. But there's something gone wrong with your watch because <laughs> – <laughs> too much time where you think I'll train like I always did and then I'll get the results I always got and you can you can do neither you can't do the training you used to do and you can't get the results it's a it's it's funny I get on if you watch the track and field world championships no no during, I when Usain Bolt ran his races and he didn't win anything hmm. and it's just it's like what one year ago, two years ago in the Olympics? Yeah, last he was year. Still the top of the world. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and I when I saw him before he even ran, it's like he looks old. God, overnight he got old, and when he ran, he was old. He'd kick it, try to kick it into that gear, and you could see him kick it into that gear, but he didn't blow everybody away. They just kept pulling away. And Mo Farah, Mo Farah. Although he won the 10K and the 5K, he tried to throw it into that extra gear. And everyone pulled away. Not everyone, but they pulled away and beat. Yep. So you don't know when you're going to blow that gear. So you better go when you can. Yeah, that's that's good advice, especially as we're, we're starting to get up there in some years. So. Well, you are. I think you're older than me. <laughs> see these, you see these people that start running when they're older? They can last a lot longer. But when your cumulative mileage hits a certain point, you just start to wear out stuff. Yeah, just wear out the gaskets and the gears, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the only gear I've got left is to go walk. <laughs> That's still forward. Still forward, yes. Yeah, it was just grind and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for having great. us on. Thank All right. You, thank thank you, you so much for agreeing to do this. Uh-huh. See was- you later. All right. Bye. See you guys. Well, okay. That was Lazarus Lake, Steve Durbin, Naresh Kumar, Crystal, Andy, and me, Stephen. We certainly hope you enjoyed this uh, special episode. It was a ton of fun for us. Um, you may not know the actual recording was almost three hours long, so I cut out a bunch of it just to get it into a reasonable time frame. But uh, we will be back next week with our regular episodes. So until then, we want to thank you for sticking us in your ears.